Hello, today I'd like to talk about a T16 bounty farm build that I like to use for my solo monk until I get to GODDH, as well as some possible variations if you were to use it in a group. And then at the end, I'm going to just do the worlds apart conquest because I haven't done that yet. And I think that's the end of my journey. So this is a Tempest Rush setup using the Justice set. Justice six piece was the free Hadrix gift this journey. Um, I like to stack a lot of cooldown where I can, although most of this gear I just pulled from my farming build. So it's got like area damage and RCR rolls that you don't necessarily need. Uh, ultimately, if you wanted to really specify it for bounties, I would stack more cooldown. Um, using Caesar's Memento is absolutely necessary. I've got Warzekians just for extra bursts of movement speed. Balance is necessary. Uh, it, Unity is what I'm using for my third ring right now, but in a group, I would probably do Ring of Royal Grandeur there, and then depending on whether you like Gold Wrap, you could go with Captain Crimson's for 20% more cooldown, or you could leave this stuff as is, but throw on a Leorix for 12.5% more cooldown, or you could do Gloves of Worship, or pretty much anything else that you feel like, um, instead of just the regular old six pieces. Uh, in the last slot, I like Injiam, just because if you do find an elite, you can go really fast for a bit. If you would rather have it be more consistently high speed, you could go Vengeful Wind, and then you could get 10 more stacks for 50% more movement speed, 10 more stacks of Sweeping Wind. So I'm doing movement speed on the skills. Annihilation gives 30% after killing. Way of the Falling Star gives 20% after dashing. Um, and we also get a burst after we kill, or after we fear something. That actually reminds me, I think I have a Wreath of Lightning leveled, so let's get one more piece. So this, after you hit an enemy, if you fear it, I'll get a burst of movement speed. If I, you know, just have a 15% chance, I might get a burst of movement speed. After I kill things, I get a burst of movement speed here and here. So there's so much tied to actually being near things that if I'm just like going around town, this is the fastest I can go, but should start flying when I'm actually in a bounty. Um, I'm using the big AoE rune of Tempest Rush and just doing Wall of Wind, which freezes everything that gets hit by Tempest Rush, which means that you get your Caesars easily. I'm using the Squirts Wildebeest combo with the Gold Wrap, so that means that Squirts is up all the time unless I'm, you know, fighting a boss and there's no gold dropping. For passives, I've got Seize the Initiative and Harmony as kind of the two that you have choices on. So this is just a little bit more damage, ultimately. Probably won't need it for most stuff, but it'll help on the boss. I do feel like some of the bosses might take a little longer to die than I'd like, which is why I have the Unity Ring and Harmony selected, just to have a little bit of a toughness pull. Because, yeah, 40, 40 million, that is not very much. Then we Tempest Rush and double that. So it's more like 160 after unity is applied but still not very much hopefully the recovery and we just kill them fast enough that's not an issue so one reason that i do like gold wrap in bounty builds is just because there's so many things where you have to untie somebody or something and while you're doing that you might not want to clear everything on the screen that might attack you um, so you can have epiphany up which allows your animation to not get canceled but that stuff really hurts if you're if you stop tempest rushing if you stop anything else that gives you damage reduction so the gold wrap gold uh just kind of protects you while you're doing that and i really enjoy that in bounties or rifts all right so let's reset the game and you only have to be on t10 to do this conquest but i'm just going to do it on t16 because my plan is to finish out the bounties when i'm done anyway so hopefully we can do this in under 20 minutes it's 304 right now I like to just go in the order of Act 1 through Act uh, 5. So we already have Injiam, so this is going to be a real quick start. I don't think I need to refresh it. Yeah, ooh, there's a Menagerist. Alright. And that... Okay, so sometimes... It like snapshots zero damage. It's weird. Um, so if that happens, release your Tempest Rush and re-click it. So I think it has to do with like the order of sweeping wind. I'm not sure how it works, but every once in a while I just get that where I'm like, oh, I'm not doing any damage. So I release Tempest Rush and re-click and it's fine. So this is our movement speed when we got like Wreath of Lightning and Annihilation that, and then it slows way back down. And then it speeds back up. 
So there's going to be a lot of that. And then, of course, we go really fast if we kill an elite. Now, the Vengeful Wind side, if you chose to go that route, that can be refreshed, but there's no way to really start a zone with it. So depending on how long until you hit enemies, it might take a while to get up to that 13 stacks, but you can just manually hit, in my case, three, and keep your Vengeful, or your 13 stacks capped out. And because Tempest Rush has a 100% chance to crit when you're fighting few targets, uh, it's really quick to just get to 13 stacks. You know, compared to the old days of Sun Wuka Wave of Light, where it might take a while. Let's hope to freeze this person. No! Yes! Alright, on to the next one. Sometimes I have to remind myself, like, are there any other bosses here? It looks like no. If you're lucky, you can still have the NGOM from the last boss as you continue on to the next one. So right here, we basically just free got to the Skeleton King. You can skip this if you have a teleport. And then we wait. You don't have to do Vidian. You have to do all the other bosses. Another strat, if you're not sure if you can make it, is to start with the ones that you're least comfortable with and then end on the easiest to get to bosses. So that way, if you get really bad RNG, you can just reset the run instead of being like, I need to get good RNG because I'm at 19 minutes, I have one boss left. So I always, I never failed this, I think ever. And the last several I've been with several minutes to spare. So I'm not really worried about that, but if you are, I would suggest like starting in act five and maybe working backwards. Yeah, this is on T16. You can do this conquest on T10. I just want to... I know I'm pretty much guaranteed to have a few bounties done by doing this conquest, so I... <coughs> sticking on T16 for that sake. <coughs> Fun strat for this boss. If you got a ranged attack, like if you're a god DH, you can just leave a pile of gold. Well, not if your pet is that active. <laughs> but I've had times where I <coughs> grabbed the gold after he became vulnerable here. So I actually had some more invulnerability during this part of the fight, which is like one of the scariest fights in the game. Not on this, uh, with this amount of damage, obviously. He just died like insta, but traditionally that is one of the scariest bosses. Probably the worst one until Act 5. And we didn't keep that in Geom. I think I picked up stuff and you don't really need to do that when you're trying to go for the conquest of just killing the bosses as fast as you can. I missed that NGM, but I got that one. So many shrines, too. Now we will map teleport to the next one. It sounds like Moltens are going off, but gold wrap. Wasn't even much gold. Wait. Oh, I just went into bounty mode in my head, and I just clicked the boss that we don't have to kill. All right, back on track. <laughs> so we got one, two. I think we're done with Act 2 now. It wouldn't take too long if I did skip a boss, but I have like four or five minutes left. It wouldn't take long to come back to Act 2. So the rest of them, I should just be able to look for the icons on the map and go to those. As long as I don't accidentally run a bounty. <laughs> Injiam. Injiam dashing strike monk is so good for this place because there's so many like cliffs and stuff. Just refresh it just in case. So if I'm not, um, if I'm just trying to dash, I actually usually release whatever my DPS skill is. Like if I'm on monk, I stop whirlwinding and just charge if I'm really trying to book it. But because I have so many movement speed things that are based on killing or hitting things, I'll every once in a while weave in another one. <clears throat> so, other options for harmony, because I just picked that because I'm worried about like a multi all fight and. I might even go one step further when I get there and like throw on Mantra of Salvation Agility and Blinding Speed Dashing Strike, which combined give like triple toughness. Um, 
but you could go with fleet footed. It's just an extra 10% movement speed though. And I've got so much that I'm not really, I thought I'd just rather get the giant amount of bonus toughness from Harmony instead. There's also damage options, like if you thought I'm going to be killing the bosses a little slow, you could go with the one that every time you freeze an enemy, they take extra damage. I wouldn't go momentum. Be well, it's additive with stuff, but I'm not using Taeguk, so I guess it wouldn't be that additive, would it? Depending on how much Tempest Rush gear you have, you almost might get the full 20%. All right, just dash. Gom is one that I never, I almost never pick the right way first. Like often I'll find one dead end and then another dead end and then the way to Gom. Um, it's gotta be this way, right? Oh, I think it was. So I only went to like one very, very short dead end. Nice. And that, I think, is that act. Kill Diablo. About to beat the game. Oh, I forgot to mention an interaction. So, Echoing Fury always rolls with a big chance to fear. So, even though I've got three one-handed weapons in the build, I would strongly recommend wearing an Echoing Fury if you want to go fast. Because the Retchel's Ring benefits when you fear something, but comes with a rather low chance to fear. So you could actually go with a high, like, 60% uh, movement speed on fear, even if it only had, like, a 1% chance to fear. Because you're going to get at least 10% on the Echoing Fury. So all of a sudden the chance to fear on the Retchel's doesn't really matter. You could also get a uh, chance to fear on a Helm if you wanted to really min-max. Wait, what? I didn't attack him yet. <laughs> they let my monk move at the beginning. That was weird. How about now? Nope, not there. And we're done. Came beaten. So we got two more bosses in Act 4. It's been less than 10 minutes and... Man, that, did I get all the bosses in Act 3? It seems like it's going real quick this time. <laughs> hmm. So I guess another strat would be not, like, save this boss, uh, the one I just did, as well as Malthael. Anything with a very long death animation, if you saved them for last, technically, that'd be the best case scenario. Because... Then you would, like, if I did those two back-to-back -back last, then that would only be one boss that I wouldn't have a prepped Ingeom to travel to. Because any other boss, you have time that you could have, like, five seconds of Ingeom for the next sprint. Let's get this, because we got a little bit of a run. Oh, not going to the portal because of this section. So I thought it was worth to take half a second and kill an elite. Oh, I think it... Anyway. <laughs> Reckon off. If you wanted to go, so like, I'm doing Ingeom instead of Vengeful Wind, but weirdly, on the other side of things, I'm going with extra movement speed with my Warzekians, but you could go Nems and then have way better uptime, because I never really think about how many shrines there are, but there seem to be a lot of shrines, at least on the way to these bosses. And, yeah, I mean, I'm fighting a bunch of elites on their own, but that could be a lot of extra potential in up uptime. Now we're going to the real big bad. There's some more. Yeah, I guess another reason that you might save Diablo and Malthael for the end would be if you get... Ooh, that's a proc. We are definitely going to make ourselves tank here before we walk in here and also wait out that proc. <laughs> 
So this is the very quick switch I was talking about. But I'm not sure if they mark the conquest completion time after the boss's animation is over or right when it says here, like, you have killed Mothale. Actually, those two things might be the same thing, but either way, I think it would end it faster if it was your final boss. So we're just going to wait because we got plenty of time, like eight minutes to do Act 5. <clears throat> I could double check the other acts, though, while I'm chilling. Two bounties done. Wow. Two bounties done. Oh, it's the same act. Delete the VOD. Vidian. Are we done yet? Five seconds. If I really wanted to min-max, <laughs> I could also pop on Flurry, because even without the 60-ish percent elemental lightning damage I have on my gear, Flurry is still more powerful. I think that's that. This guy, anytime he stops losing health, it means you can't hurt him, so you might as well stop attacking, because I think it saves time. Same with Urzile. If you just keep, like, stunning him and stunning him and stunning him, you could just be moving on to the next segment and wasting time. So, like, dead is dead just popped up. Would the conquest be done right now? Or would it be done after... Yeah, it says I have killed Malthale as well. <clears throat> Oop. Spending time picking up stuff. Going back to the speed. Looking for anything to get some gold. Gold gives you, in addition to the obvious benefit of being able to spend it, and the armor for gold wrap, it also just makes you faster with, via Boon of the Hoarder, so... I always like to start a zone with some gold. Um, where are we going? No, that looks like it's going away. Adria, I think, would make a very good contender for your first bounty if you're worried about completion. It's one of the maziest ones there is. Oh, it's a lion's claw. I might go back there. <laughs> I'm trying to build a uh, super powerful Yuliana's. I didn't I didn't know it was going to be a lion's claw. <clears throat> so I don't know where I'm going, but I just always kind of feel like it's going to be up on top somewhere, right? Because you have to like go up into uh, the door, which here it is. I'm going to not swap any uh, mantra or anything for this fight because this guy, after a few hundred times fighting him, he's not a big deal at all. The only powerful attacks he has are just, like, super well displayed on the ground. There's, like, beams that fall, and he has a circle that he jumps onto. As long as you're not in those places, I've never been procced by him. Also, he's just going to die really fast. So they're worlds apart. We got it. Season Journey Guardian complete. Book of Cain. <laughs> yeah, I went back for it. What did we get? Nothing. GG.